Hello, everybody, and welcome to the May 29th Trips and Traps. Andy Serling, joined by Richard Migliori. We got a beautiful day. <laughs> it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day, but also we've got turf races to talk about yet. It seems like this is where we find the most trips. Yeah, you really do. And it was a little tough last week because we didn't have as much turf racing because we got such lousy weather, especially on Saturday. But we did manage to find four races from last week, and we're going to start with some races from May 21st. And we're going to start with the fourth race on May 21st, a turf sprint. And I want to talk about a couple of trips horses had, Richie, particularly the one invading humor who gets left. Ornelia, the horse, the four who's in blue, gets in some trouble in the stretch. And I also wanted to get some of your opinions on the general pace of this race. But the first thing to talk about, invading humor is behind the eight ball. I like that Arad got him right in the game. Yeah, he did. He got left. They weren't going particularly fast. And then he kind of goosed him and maybe he even did a little more than he wanted to, kind of running up on the two horses' heels at this point. It would have been nice if he was able to kind of ease into the race a little more. But once he squeezed him, the horse took that cue and really wanted to get going. Yeah, he, he really did. He ran up in there well. And I, I, I was impressed after the beginning that he was able to hold on for third in this race because a lot of times that'll take a lot of the starch out of him. And I also believe that this was a horse coming off a layoff, likely prepping to go a little longer. Ornelia's behind him. Some people, and I got this on Twitter, um, thought the seven horse who finished second, Uncle Sutter in between, that maybe Cornelio took away a little bit of his advantage by rating him too hard on the lead. And I was wondering your opinion of that, Richie. See, I, I, I don't feel that way. It's such a difficult position when a rider's got a horse with speed and he's got another horse showing speed that's 20 to 1 inside him. Do you really want to engage? The more you go forward, the more the other rider's going to go forward. you got to almost ride the race like he's not there. So he was riding the races, though. He was in front and saving horse, and they sprinted home. I think he just got gunned down. I, I totally agree. Now, you see Ornelia being shuffled back out of the race, and if you liked her, you might want to give another chance. Invading Humor does well to finish third. I agree with you, Richie, and that's sort of my sentiment. And I'd like the winner. I thought the winner was just legitimately best in here. The horse sat off the pace a little closer than usual and was able to circle the field. But I agree. Uncle Southern had no excuse. I thought it was a terrific ride. Yeah, I, I thought he gave him every chance to win. Uh, and, and I think this race illustrates how important the start is. Obviously, this was a sprint. But no matter what the distance, because it takes you in or out of the position you want right off the break, especially when you get left, kind of handcuffed Irad on invading humor. Now he's got to, you know, chase up the inside. And also, Ornelia, she didn't break particularly well either and now had a five that trip and it didn't work out I think also that that's a good illustration of an unlucky trip on the turf you want to save ground if it doesn't work out of course people are going to criticize you but at the same time if you get through you're the hero yeah no I, I agree with you on all of those points and the thing about Ornelia she had kind of lost her form towards the end of last year and I think she showed in here because she made a couple of moves in there that maybe she's gotten her act together a little bit and just got a little unlucky in this race yeah she's definitely a I would look to give another try to yeah as well as invading humor stretching out I wonder if invading humor though had broken cleanly gone to the front made the pace a little bit quicker maybe might have helped the eventual winner even more you know exactly because the way she got aggressive after she didn't break well she easily could have been on the lead if she broke cleanly yeah i think that would have made it much tougher for the speed horses we will turn our attention now to our next race which was the last race on may 21st and this was a race that was won easily by point roll but the third finisher macagon had a very unlucky trip yeah she kind of got bothered at the break when the one horse broke out and she also in turn broke in a bit um, and Johnny Vlas was kind of had a steady. And again, this illustrates you're already completely out of the position you probably envisioned going into the race. And then when they don't go particularly fast, although this, this pace was more legitimate, um, now you're trying to find that spot to creep back up into the race. Yeah, I was surprised that Johnny was as aggressive as he was. It's almost like he was frustrated, as, as though he was frustrated in here. And we're going to show you very quickly how, how quickly Johnny sort of gets her back in the race, but also takes her to the outside. As you see her back on the outside of the three horses in those yellow silks, and she's already gotten sort of in a position and outside in the clear. Macagon took a lot of money in this race to be 7-2. to two. This was clearly a live horse coming in and a live horse coming out. She couldn't have won this race, but she should have been second. Richard. She should have been second, because now, in essence, what you're doing is making an extremely long, sustained run, and you're taking the worst of it being wide. And we all know on the grass, you don't want to be wide. You can illustrate here, the horse that wound up second the first time started with Joe Bravo, she's saving ground, and they're basically in the same position, but Macagon's already made up ground to get to that position. She's made up the ground. She's gotten it wide. She's got no real cover. I mean, she's got nothing going for her. Um, or he does, I should say. I'm sorry. This is a 
this is a cold or, or a gelding in here. Uh, I, uh, there's a very good effort by Mac Dunn. And once again, I don't think you're being point roll who ran a very good race as an horse for Christophe Clement with a bit of a future. But now he's four wide while Joe Bravo's saving ground. Yeah, and Joe Bravo did have to steady there. But on the turf, it, it, you can get away with steadying and save the ground. It's going to intensify your turn of foot. On the dirt, maybe not so much. Now you see Joe switch out to follow him, and he's going to eventually get second. I agree with you. Nobody's beating the winner. This is a very good horse point role, better than this this group. But for second, you definitely can make a case Macagon was second best. Yeah, I mean, the winner won by six and a quarter. I, you know, listen, there's nothing you can do about the break, but if he, the two breaks cleanly and gets a sort of more even trip and saves a little ground, I don't know if the margin's going to be more than two to three lengths, and you're talking about two to three lengths behind a horse that ran not quite stakes quality, but a maiden that projects a horse that we might see in those kind of races later in the year. Yeah, a absolutely. So, a although you have to like the first-time starter, Thurgood, who ran second, because she stayed in the bridle, or he, I should say, stayed in the bridle a long way, and that's very difficult. A first-time starter tends to let go of the bridle at some point because they're just a little bit confused. They don't work as far as they usually run. This horse actually was really very clued into what, what he was doing. Well, well, he's coming from a trainer, Christophe Clement, who in general is good firsters, but his run over the last year or two with first-time stars in the turf, what he did at Saratoga, I think he won with like five of them, and he was unlucky with one or two more. He has these horses prepared for their first starts. Yeah, they, they look like they've already done it, because usually first-time starters do not pull riders into position like well, that. That was an interesting race, and I think we saw some quality horses in there, especially in the winter, but Macagon will be tough in the subsequent start. We're going to our attention now to the eighth race the next day on May 22nd, and this was a race where a couple of riders got caught playing a cat and mouse game and ended up costing one of them the victory. Yeah, and I think that's the perfect way to say it. They definitely got caught playing cat and mouse with each other. And, and I understand it, you know, as a former rider, I got involved with these things too. You're, you're looking at a horse towards your inside. You don't want to allow him to get out of a spot that you might be able to hold him in. That rider's also thinking, how am I going to get out of this spot? Because he's aware of your presence. And it's this is like the most clear illustration of that. And then you get a tremendous ride from another rider who I believe was being patient. Maybe he got caught off guard. They came so hard with so much momentum. Yeah, I, it, it may have been a combination of both, and I think Raj was surprised by them coming. And, you know, Raj is riding front, who's third right now in the, in the orange. It's not an easy thing to do, Richie, when a couple horses come at you, especially in that point in the race. Your horse's natural instinct is to go with them. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, these, these are the two horses we're talking about playing cat and mouse. Uh, Javier Castellano on the outside. Um... And on, that's Comp Pacific. Pacific. And on the inside of him is Jose Lascano on Middleburg. And Raj is sitting in the clear third. And these aren't cars. It's not like you, you feel a presence and you step on the accelerator. They can't just accelerate that quickly. I think that's what people lose sight of. It's not as easy as driving a car. Yeah, and when, when Javier says it's an opportunity we've talked about to try to lock Jose in, Jose says, I'm going to have none of that. Somehow Raj is able to let them go. And I do wonder, you see him looking outside, but maybe he's like, who's this? Yeah, because they came so quickly that, you know what, he did the smart thing here though he didn't panic he said okay you know they're they're going all in at this point and you can see he kind of gets back out from behind their heels and now he's going to follow and the horse on the outside com pacific kind of thrown her best his best punch at this point now raj can follow middleburg and come out save all that extra ground save all that extra horse i mean it worked out so perfectly for him he was helped by the fact as you said the com pacific didn't have more horse now obviously the fact he just won the race if com pacific had more horse he would have won the race but by not having more horse he drifted a little bit and raj could so easily get through the scene yeah and and again you can understand what's going through at least i'm watching it going through jose lascano's mind javier castellano's mind rajiv's mind and I, positions that i've obviously been in before and when you have a guy saying well he's trying to hold me in I'm going to make sure I hold my position and then the guy that's outside going well if I can get there quick enough I can keep him stuffed in behind them and he's traveling well he's the horse to beat there's a lot of gamesmanship within the race yeah and I mean this is an odd situation where the six seven eight were all relatively similar prices and I think it's hard you know you've got to make a choice say which is the guy I'm going to try to go after and in this case I, I guess you could argue that Javier was right because Middleburg was best in here so maybe he was right doing what he did he just didn't have any horse didn't matter but it kind of put jose lescano between a rock and a hard place and i totally understand why jose decided to move forward at the time he's got the, the, uh, the actual favorite, post-time favorite outside of him, if I allow him to go now, well, now I'm not holding my position. A lot of cat and mouse. Yeah, there. and I think it's an interesting um, illustration of something that somebody at face value might say, that was a bad ride. But it's not a bad ride. It's a ride that didn't work out. You've got to make decisions in the race. And I don't know what decision 
they could have, Jose could have made Lescano, that he would have won the race. I think Javier put him in a tough spot. And one of the reasons Javier wins a lot of races is he puts a lot of guys in tough spots, and his horse just was empty. If he had any horse, he might have won. Javier Castellano won an Eclipse Award last year for being aggressive. Jose Lescano did everything right holding his position. And also, we have the ability to come back and watch replays and think about it. This has happened at an extremely fast pace for these guys, and I think that's what really goes through guys' minds. So it's, it's unfair to say something's a bad ride, unless you kind of, you start really looking into the race. No, I agree, and I think this is a perfect illustration of a number of those points. One more race to show, and this is on May 23rd, the fourth race, and we're talking about the third place finisher, Corinthian Summer, and this was a race that had a monstrously slow pace, and the reason I was showing this race was, I wanted Richie to try to get in the head of Joe Bravo, who's riding Corinthian Summer, and what is going through your mind? I felt he wasn't going to win, but I felt that he was really too headstrong and taking his horse back and out of a race that featured no pace whatsoever. Yeah, I, and I understand leaving the chute, the mile and a 16th on the inner turf, it, that dog leg is very difficult. The inside horses, if they go straight, technically their riders aren't doing anything wrong. They're going straight. But the turn folds away to the left, so they don't follow the contour of that turn. It kind of jams the guys up in the middle. I really feel that's what happened to Joe earlier and kind of took him out of position. Now they're going slow and his horse is keen and he keeps wanting to run up on heels. And I think Joe's looking at the horse in front of him going, I'm not having a lot of options. I think in hindsight, he would have maybe been better off allowing his horse to go forward at this point and then seeing if he could have worked out because he wound up having to take back, get in the clear, and then make that run wide around the turn. Yeah, he wasn't going to win. He should have been second in this race, and I know it was a frustrating beat for anybody who needed him for second in here. And I guess, you know, it's hard with these mile and 16th races around on the inner track because you're talking about a situation that exists. I don't think that there are too many people outside of a rider that understand to even discuss what you're saying, and I know what you mean when the horse is going straight, but the turn is going away from him. Yeah, and, and in a perfect world, everybody else on the outside would be going straight too, but obviously those guys are trying to get over to get their position and save ground. Plus, you're also braking on the outside of the main turf course. So you actually go uphill a little bit. You you, you wind up um, going up over the crown of the main, tr main turf course, down onto the inner turf course, and a lot of horses lose their footing. It's never a perfectly straight break there. And you can see Joe had to kind of extricate himself, made that big pop at the turn. The winner's got so much left because he's got the softest trip going slow on the lead, and then it probably cost him second. But to Joe's uh, in defense, he tried to win the race. Right. I mean, he took his best punch. Now, if he had conceded at that point, said, well, let me try to be second, he certainly would have been second instead of running at the winner. In hindsight, mm -hmm. let's say, you know, you have an alternate universe where you're actually able to watch the race get run, and then you get to run it over, you get a do-over. You have to think that Gallup Joe Racer. would be more, more, yeah, would be winning. Yeah, well, I always have two overs whenever I lose in Gal Fraser. So it's the secret to my success. Uh, you, you, you would want to be more aggressive. So you'll be interested to see how they race going forward from here. Uh, yeah, a absolutely. I, you know, again, we're not privy to what the instructions were, or maybe a horse has a particular way he has to run. I think looking at it from the outside, and, and I haven't spoken with Joe Bravo about it, if he had to do it over, I think he would allow his horse to run up more freely when he had the opportunity to before everybody's position was established. But I'll go back to out of the shoot. He was compromised there. Okay, good things to know, and it'll be interesting to see where they end up next time, Widener or the Inner. Those are our thoughts. We can use your thoughts. Trips and traps at NyraInc.com.